Good morning, everyone. I have a view on the clock so we don't overshoot. And uh, I don't, I should actually take this. Uh, I only uh, like talking and not listening, so I don't have a question for you to start, but I'll make sure we cut off maybe five minutes earlier. So um, we'll actually have time uh, to uh, debate and uh, hearing your questions about that. And I'm always very thankful if I'm not the first gig. So thank you very much, Dr. Traud and Christian for already warming up this crowd um, when we jump to the bit more juicy stuff of geopolitics. I should say Agora Strategy, we're a strategy consultancy translating geopolitics for businesses. So we do 70% industry and preparing industry for geopolitical challenges and 20-25% is uh, from the financial sector. So uh, I may have uh, some ideas about what you're thinking at the moment. So um, when it comes to geopolitics, I want to just briefly talk about a few points about the current trend, what is happening, what is going on, and of course have a more specific view on the US elections, but not that much who's going to win. <laughs> That's a tricky answer. But uh, actually on uh, the scenarios which come out of both sides, so be it uh, Kamala Harris or uh, a second Trump term. And the main theme, of course, at the moment, the overarching theme is the strategic rivalry between the United States and China. So I'm going to spend a few words on that as well. And actually, I also wanted to give you some methods or some uh, real structure uh, with you. So how to do it with geopolitics when it comes to actually, um, yeah, when you do an investment, when you invest in a company, but also in the real estate sector, uh, how to do a political due diligence of a company, how to look at supply chain, vertical integration, etc., and so on, so um, that you also see the opportunities of geopolitical change and not only the risk. Okay, so as it's early in the morning, and as you all got a financial background, I thought it's nice to start actually with some financial theory. And uh, see everybody's getting already very excited about that. So um, you may have heard of the economist Hyman Minsky. It's more the Keynesian school of economics and I don't want to jump too deep into that. But the basic benefit or the basic added value of Minsky in the theorizing was to describe the circle of a financial crisis. And his basic assumption at the end is to say that actually uncertainty and instability is the highest when actually